What's up, Aries? This is Jesse with 44 Astro with a general tarot reading for the full moon coming on August 1st. Um, this is a general reading for sun, moon, rising Aries, but it could also be for um, in individuals that have strong Mars in their chart, like Mars in the first house, um, Mars in Aries, um, Mars conjunct the ascendant with a lot of aspects on it, a stellium in Aries, a stellium being multiple conjunctions, three, three plus within a single sign. That means that's strong energy, and it could be that that would resonate for you heavily. So it's not really always about sun, moon, rising, though most of the time that's where your energy will be strongest. But you have to look for specific things. Conjunctions are very powerful in natal charts, and that's basically just concentrations of energies. And you should always, when in a natal chart, look at conjunctions specifically with your ascendant as that's going to, like, for example, if Mars is conjunct your ascendant, you're basically seeing the world. Your Yourself will have the lens of Aries on it because it's Mars. You have the lens of Mars over your ascendant, so how you see the world will be th viewed through Mars. So you'll look at things like an Aries. So if, if that's the case, let's say your sun is Aquarius, moon is Scorpio, uh, ascendant is Pisces, but you have uh, Mars conjunct your ascendant, with like aspects to other planets in Aries, you're gonna have strong Aries in your chart. That's just an example. I had somebody who was confused asking what they should, uh, in the comments asking how they should watch it by sign. But that's really just knowing your natal chart. If you don't really know your natal chart a lot, then you wanna watch by sun, moon, rising. And in general, um, those will be the, the strongest um, energies in a, in a basic natal chart. I'll eventually on this channel, um, when I start low uploading astrology, once I actually get enough subs for it to make sense for me to start doing all the astrology, um, I'll actually probably start doing natal chart readings for people. I'll probably do some for f just streaming and fun for free, just so I can help people learn. But I will be putting uh, eventually videos explaining each planet's the importance, what important energies are in natal charts, things like that. But anyway, this is for Aries. Um, however, that resonates for you. Um, some people say, "Well, everybody has a first house," but House first house is just house of self. Don't ever don't ever really go by house unless it's the planet that's in that house that makes them stronger. Always go by the planet. Always go by the sign. Not so much the house. House is like what area of your life it's going to be affecting. So just because you have an eighth house doesn't necessarily mean you're involved with Scorpio. It, it will be involved in like your sex life and maybe into the occult and things like that. But it doesn't necessarily make it Scorpio unless Pluto is there, or um, or it's in the sign of Scorpio. There's the card, or something like that. I digress. So this is the moon card you got for the full moon reading. It is emotions are running high. Well, that's interesting. I'll tell you what, in full moons, you know, they call it lunacy for a reason. People, uh, people do end up acting a little crazy on full moons. They talk about it all the time. So emotions could be running high. There's no doubt about that. All right, I'm going to be doing the, my usual thought spread. I'll explain that. And my clarifiers will be the thought deck. Uh, Thoth deck was designed by Aleister Crowley, but even though it's based off of the Golden Dawn's deck, but he altered it in his own way. He went to, he went to war basically with the Golden Dawn and uh, W.B. Yeats, which is a great poet. Him and uh, Aleister Crowley were in like a magic war or something. You take it for what you want. Once, well, I guess the Golden Dawn is kind of represented as a site of good. And I have the Golden Dawn deck uh, I'll, I'll use one day. It's not very colorful, so I don't like to really use it. The Crowley deck's colorful, so I like to use it. It shows up better on a uh, camera. But yeah, I mean, you take it for what you want. Crowley being the darkness or the dark side and uh, the Golden Dawn being the light side. I have the Golden Dawn's book. It's like this thick. I'm not even exaggerating. <laughs> All right, well, since I dropped the deck, we'll stop right there. So what are the energies for Aries? Got some court cards, quite a few of them. For the uh, starting August 1st and dealing with this full moon. I think it's a super moon, actually, which means it's even gonna be even a little bit more intense. Hmm. Bottom of the deck, if it means anything to you, is the world. So if you did want to go by that energy, that would be completions, having everything you need to accomplish what you want. The world having everything in the world that you could ever want or need. <laughs> Completion. Alright, so the general question. Here in the middle are the general energy. 
you have the High Priestess, Knight of Swords, and the Queen of Pentacles. So, could have uh, people around you specifically. Could have, um, could be your energy, but with emotions running high, it would suggest it's maybe people around you. Queen of Pentacles could be Earth sign individual, Earth sign female, um, Air sign individual, Air sign male or female. Um, Queen of Pentacles is generally nurturing energy. This is, you know, intuition, guidance. This is a uh, Jashin and Boaz. That's the um, pillars of Freemasonry. If, if if you don't know it, it's mercy and severity in the Kabbalah, the two paths up the Tree of Life. But it's it's moon energy. It can be secrets, things like that. So this could have something to do with secrets. Could have to do with secrets between these individuals. And you could be a couple people around you. The, either you're keeping secrets from or they're keeping secrets from you. Maybe you find out and that's why emotions are higher. Maybe you already know, but you didn't tell them that you know. And they're around you and they're, you know, acting like you don't know and you do know. Which is definitely possible. Or it could be that you need to, there are secrets. Because you do have the moon card here, but it's it's under advice. Um, and you'd have the lover's card. You have multiple lover's cards. It could be in a relationship. doesn't necessarily have to be a love relationship, but it definitely could be a love relationship. And if it is an individual coming in for love... Um, looking like there could be some kind of confusion around it, and it could be the way um, it could be that the individual is like this. It could be you have multiple options. One's like this, one's a kind of nurturing type, grounded individual, and one is maybe a fast-moving individual, or maybe that's the person that you're being cheated on. Maybe that's the secret. Maybe this individual or this individual or seeing someone behind your back or something like that. Um, it's not necessarily for sure the case, but it suggests secrets or some kind of um, energy like that. With with court cards, it, it suggests kind of like with that with that high priestess there, some kind of like secrets or like gossip type stuff, stuff hidden in the background. And and it could definitely have to do with love. Someone that you that you love, either you're trying like you're interested in to date or that you are dating or it could be with your, who you are. It could be a loved one because on your current path, you have the Page of Wands, Two of Cups, and the Seven of Cups. So, you know, Page of Wands could be someone being passionate towards you or you being passionate towards them and he's facing the lovers. So it could be somebody that, that actually might be after you. Somebody has passions for you and is keeping it secret. That makes a lot of sense. And there's confusion around it. Maybe there's some kind of confusion in them and they're not willing to actually tell you maybe. Which is a possibility. It could be that they, they have those kind of um, ambitions toward you, love, or you have it toward them and you're not wanting to tell them. It looks like it's between an air sign and a and a, a earth sign. Or someone who has heavy earth in their chart and heavy uh, air. The other one the individual has heavy, heavy air in their chart. It could just be that it's a... Uh, airy type individual like even though i don't really i, I do have air, a good amount of air in my chart but most of my like intellectual blabber comes kind of from my fire really um but people like me come off as i do have a grand trine in there so like i'm an airy individual like the way i speak the way i talk so people like me they're high energy speak really fast that's an airy individual so it could be someone like that with someone who is more grounded and calm nurturing type and maybe because because of these things, they're not willing to either say how they feel or maybe they're not really sure how they feel because of these differences. Something like that. I'm not really necessarily sure. Um, it said emotions are running high. I mean, and this is, this is a passionate type card. I'm trying to see if then there's definitely fire energy here. I'm not sure the validity of um, any kind of like sexual interaction or anything like that, but it doesn't mean it can't be the case. The other path that can be chosen this is more of an looks like a more of an emotional path, um, like the three of of wands is more of like someone that's established. Like he's sitting there, it's almost like he's waiting, right? People like to say he's waiting for his ships to come in on the three of rods, but it's really like he's established. Look at everything behind him; it's like his, his work speaks for itself. And then, but at the same time, page of cups is like an offer of love, so that's more of an emotional aspect of it. And then, you know, this is the magician. This is having all the tools you need. And it could be uh, that you're trying to over here trying to manifest it. See, it feels like over here is the more active path with the page of wands, the the lovers. It's like you going after them. It's like being assertive. And then this other path is like waiting. You're like, well, this other path is like I'm just hoping that I can manifest it. If I just kind of hang back, 
and they'll come offer me love. I'll wait with the three of rods. Like I, I'll wait, and then they'll come to me and offer me love. And that's exactly what I want. And we're going to clarify on that. Um, the current path suggests someone being assertive, someone stepping up and actually saying what the hell they feel or what they think. And this is definitely a love reading. And normally I don't necessarily go that route unless I see that those kind of cards in it. But I see two love cards in it. The advice literally has the lovers there. But again, there's confusion energy. There's more moon energy. So we got the seven of cups, the high priestess, and the moon. So there is definitely some kind of confusion in this or something hidden, some kind of secrets, something not being shown all the way, emotions not being shown, you know. Um, yeah, it's like somebody's somebody's got a hidden love. Or they they they're hiding they are hiding their love, and it, it feels like that you know this is Aries so this is a fire sign right here and he's not facing it like he's not facing he's facing away from this, it's like Aries maybe not seeing what's right in front of him, that someone in front of him, really likes you, right, or maybe you have multiple options and you're not choosing, but it could be that it's right in front of you and um, either you're choosing not to see it that that they really like you and you and you're not really taking action on it or vice versa or they are trying to take action over here and you're not really seeing it maybe they're not good at flirting you know some people are some people aren't so maybe they're not good at, maybe they're not good at flirting and you're not really getting the message um i mean especially especially if it's a if it's an earth sign or a really calm grounded person um or or even a air sign person fast moving um intellectual energy type individual i mean we're going to do some clarifiers but yeah it looks like this this may actually be you and he's facing away from the lovers and the moon which is interesting it may be that you know you have a choice focus on your ambitions or focus on love and then that's going to be your choice in life right and that depends on what you want to accomplish we'll do some clarifiers to kind of see if we can get an idea of what's the of what's the right choice this is the outcome so that's the devil, the king of cups, and the hanged man. So it depends on how you looked at the hanged man, and I would like to look at cards around him. But in, normally I would say it's a different perspective and kind of even enlightenment, right? But in this case with the devil there, it's a little different. That actually would be stuck. I would say that's being stuck in a situation, right? It feels like being stuck emotionally or looking at your emotions different because the devil is also a stuck card. Like they're chained, right? They're being stuck there. Um, it could be vices, but again, these two cards look very similar but they have very different connotations. This is like joyful want, uh, joyful love. This is love by choice. This is you're feeling chained to a relationship or vices or something like that. And with this here, you could be feeling stuck. Okay, And it could be the fact that either that you're looking for love and you feel like it's not coming for you, you're feeling stuck, but it looks like it's right here and then maybe you're not choosing to see it. Or you feel stuck in op op like obligated to something else like maybe uh work or just you know what you want to accomplish in life which would make sense i mean there's nothing wrong with that if you want to accomplish your goals in life sometimes you got to put love on the back burner until it's time but if it is that you are looking for love it could be that you're not really seeing what you need to see you're not seeing this this love and emotion being offered even though it looks like it actually is <laughs> And it could be that you're chained to those types of thoughts, right? Or it could be that someone's offering you love and you do like them, but you're in a relationship that doesn't really make you happy, but you're just one of those people that's loyal and you're like, look, I'm just not necessarily willing to, to cheat or to end my relationship in order to, you know, to get with this other person. We gonna clarify. But this looks like a love ring all up and down. I almost want to clarify freaking everything. <laughs> Emotions are running high, huh? It looks like it. Don't really see any argumentative energy here, though. So it's like, if, if, if it's anything like that, I mean, this would be the only card that I would suggest could be argumentative. The only one. And he's running over to this side of the board. So to this other path. I want to check out what the High Priestess is. What is it? What is it that's secret? What is it that's not hidden? Oh, there we go. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh interesting so like with the current situation some con contradictory cards here nine of cups page of page of cups 
well, in this Prince of Cups, in this, and then uh, Ten of Swords. So it could be. That whatever it is that you had wished for, like emotionally, in either a current relationship or like the wish that you were hoping in either a current relationship or in one that you that you're trying to find or like trying to find love. Like like it's it's not working out, or you're feeling like it's not working out. You're feeling like it's enough is enough. And it could be that like you're ending a relationship. Because, you know, you, you wish to have a better emotional relationship. You know, you, you're wishing for this. So you're going to have to have an ending, right? And it might be, it's probably something you can't necessarily see yet. Let's clarify these other cards here. And maybe it's that you secretly wish it. And this is what it's feeling like. It's feel like you secretly wish it, right? Because it's, it's on the secret card, right? It's on the high priestess. It's like you secretly wish for an ending. Like you secretly wish to maybe to be out of a relationship or just to end maybe even being single if, if that's what it is. Like you no longer, you're like, I don't want to be single anymore. But at the same time, you don't want to put forth the effort. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like you got a career maybe or you, you're focusing on other things in your life that you feel are really important. So you, you, you don't want to take the time and you want somebody else to like come up and sweep you off your feet. But it doesn't really always work like that, right? If you, ooh, there we go. If you find someone you're interested in, like sometimes you just got to make the effort. See, over here, the lovers right now, boom, on the Two of Cups. Well, I kind of put them all on these three cards, but look, you got the lovers right here. On the path that you're on, like I said, this off, this passionate offer of love, like this assertive aspect, you know, it says like, it's like there's confusion around it, but it's like you should do it. If it's you that needs to, um, and it looks like a fire sign, actually, which could be you, of course, that, you know, that queen of uh, rods can definitely be an Aries. Come on, focus in. And that's the Three of Cups, which is the Lord of Abundance in this deck. And you got the uh, Queen of Rods and then the Lovers. So like, yeah, maybe you need to just go for it. Like if you want that change, you just got to go for it. Sometimes you got to take a risk. I mean, like, I'm not telling anybody to go uproot their lives or whatever. But, I mean, the only constant, the only constant, the only true constant is change, right? And a lot of us will sit there our whole lives and, like, be unhappy. And just because of routine and being comfortable we're just like you know what? we're just going to deal with it because this 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 and this and then we completely ignore our happiness um there are opportunities for our own happiness sometimes you got to take a leap of faith sometimes you gotta sometimes you just gotta go for it and this looks like whatever this is especially i mean it could be a fire sign for sure it doesn't necessarily have to be it, it i see a lot of fire here but it definitely could be earth too screaming like earth my guess is whatever that your maybe your current relationship is with an earth sign maybe um, and maybe it's argumentative. That's why you got this Knight of Swords here. And it's secretly either you want it to end or they want it to end. But there's another. But the path that you're on, you know, if you're assertive toward love, and it could be with your partner right now if you're fighting or whatever, maybe you just got to be assertive and step forward, you know, and be physically together. Because I'm telling you right now, if you want a healthy relationship, it needs to be physical in general you, you need to because otherwise you're going to build up all kind of stress and that's going to manifest itself in all kinds of different ways generally like this and that's never that's never fun and never good but if it's but if you're single you need to be assertive go after them it'll be worth it and it'll work out this other path looks like waiting and hoping that it just kind of manifests and it may we're going to see what the cards say so it may be that either path will work out for you but we're going to see of disc but there's the devil again and travel hmm on this deck it's called science so the clarifies on this other path had the prince of pentacles there's the old devil again and the six of swords which this is called science it's kind of like understanding things figuring things out but in you know the traditional deck it's you know travel or movement um yeah I don't like this other path I think the path you're on looks better I think this path, well, here's the, here's the thing, though. You got the devil and the outcome, too. So it may not be a whole lot you can do about it. It's 
I mean, the current path you're on looks like love, though. The other path looks a little different. It looks like waiting waiting isn't to, isn't to play for sure. Waiting isn't to play because you're going to I think you're going to get more of this kind of individual, which would be more of like a controlling type. And I think it's or it's or it's not even that. It's that the waiting, you're not going to get the love if if, if you're waiting, right? You're going to it's all going to be about money. It's going to be about the material, right? Cuz that's what I'm telling you right here. This is all material. So this could be like you only focus on the material aspect of things, like only your money and your and your house and your possessions, those types of things. And it could be that that's the only thing you're trying to figure out. And so like that's the whole waiting thing, right? You're not going to go after love. You're, you're going to manifest what you want. And maybe that's what you want more. Maybe you have more ambition toward that type of thing. Like I said, it's a choice whether you want the, the material aspect. Thing. But I think even if you do choose love, the outcome still shows a type of material. Um, but from what I'm seeing with these two with it, it's more of a relationship thing. So either way, you're going to get tied into, tied into this devil energy. So it could be Capricorn. Definitely could be a Capricorn. But it could just be, you know, feeling chained to something, feeling stuck with something. So I'm gonna clarify the advice. I, the advice is the advice is kind of the advice is saying kind of like ignore the love and go for the material. <laughs> That's what the advice seems to be saying, but it's saying that love is here, and it looks like that. Oh, thank you, phone. That if you choose love, if you choose love, you're gonna feel stuck. That sounds terrible. Well, I guess it depends, right? It doesn't really mean you're, you're going to feel stuck. I mean, it looks like you're going to feel stuck. If you choose, like, the whole assertive route, you're going to feel stuck, I think. I think you need to go, um, yeah, you're going to feel stuck. I think you need to go ahead and take the risk on whatever, whatever, like, the travel is. And, like, take care of your material aspects and your ambitions first. Otherwise, you're, you're going to feel tied down, I think. That's what it, that's what it feels like. It feels like it's there for you, and if you do go for like a like you have a you have a flirt, crush on somebody or some kind of um, urge towards somebody, if you show that, it's going to pay off. But it's not it's not in the long run. It's not going to lead to exactly what you want. And if you're already married, I think it still kind of applies, right? If you're already married, sometimes you got to take a risk, and maybe maybe you just maybe you're feeling tied down with it. I mean, many of us do that just out of comfort of of repetition of our lives you know out of the patterns that we develop we're just like oh whatever we, we'll deal with it even though we're not happy or not feeling excited or fulfilled or any of that we'll just stay here because it works and um, the majority of people do that and but don't get me wrong you don't have to feel that way even in your relationship right like i said being physical going on adventures together tell each other jokes there's all kinds of ways i mean just it just depends on the interaction and the way the way you process your thoughts about the individual and how you view them like when you think about that individual or individuals um what's the first thing that comes to your mind and that'll tell you a lot right there and then it's your choice if you know you want to stay on that narrative or not and you can you can alter that narrative within yourself come on what's the advice here give me something oh there it was Ooh, the emperor that's the aries card and the empress and the star Ooh, juicy Okay, well here we're back to the to the couple, even though they're facing away from each other, man. Look at that. It's the Emperor, the Empress, and the Star. But they're facing away from each other. Right? So I would suggest that whatever your wish is, and there's that wish again, right? Because we had the we had the we had the wish card right here clarifying the current situation. So there's a wish around it. There's a wish around love. Like Aries is the Emperor, right? And you want your empress, or vice versa. You know, it could be the empress wanting the emperor. And that's your wish, straight up. That's your wish. So I mean, like, who am I to say? Who am I to say? Don't go for the love, right? Like, I think that you may miss out on some kind of opportunity. But who am I to say miss out on love? Like, I'm never. I mean, I I'm always gonna say pick love. If it, if it, if it feels like love and it feels real. I mean, but again, we all feel a certain way in the in the initial tropes of a relationship, right? It's all like, 
asses and elbows, I always say, for the first probably couple years. And then you have to let down your persona and really try to understand who each other are. And then at that point, decide if you really want to make it work or not. Many people go their own, their own their ways after that. Or they feel like that once they start really realizing who the other individual is, and it's not all about um, showing them the face that you were showing them to catch them initially and so that they would like you, and you're showing them the real you, or they're showing you the real, them the real you, or themselves to you and their, their real form, you may not necessarily like it. But with that being said, many times it can always be worked out. It just depends on effort, right? Like I said, I've been in a relationship for 21 years. I look young, but I'm almost 38. And I've been in a successful relationship for 21 years. And you can trust what I'm saying. These things I'm saying are real. And if you're willing to work on it, it will work. You have to be able to compromise. You, sometimes you have to acquiesce. Sometimes you, you know, sometimes you need to stand firm. Learn what it is be- that each of you do best in the relationship. And when those situations come along, you know, delegate. Or relegate to, to that individual. And they're probably going to accomplish it better. Doesn't mean you can't chime in or have a say. But you, you know, learn, learn, learn your strengths. And learn what your strengths are as a couple. Let's see what the outcome is here. It looks like you're choosing love. Oh, that didn't want to stop. Or that didn't want to go. Victory. Princess of Wands. Ace of Pentacles. I mean, I feel like it doesn't even matter, right? I feel like even if you do choose love here, and, and, and you have this outcome and you feel stuck, you're going to have, even if you f- get to that point, you're still going to have your money, you're going to have your victory, and you're going to have your passion, right? Because you got the, the princess of wands here, which is in this deck, you don't get princesses in standard decks, only in, you know, Thoth deck, you get them in the um, uh, Golden Dawn deck as well. Now you have victory there, you have the ace of pentacles, ace of discs, and the princess of wands. Looks like either way, even if you're feeling stuck, right? It doesn't matter. You're going you're gonna to have your material with it, right? You can still get it with it. So maybe don't just focus on um, the material, but I don't see you losing either way. Looks like you're winning either way. Like he's facing away from love here in the advice, but yet on the advice, the clarifying on the lovers, it's like even though they're facing away f- from each other, the emperor and the empress, it's with a wish card or a healing card. So like... And maybe it is that you split up from someone, like an ex. But like maybe maybe you're getting back together with them. Or maybe you've been working with an individual and you haven't really looked at them in that way. But maybe, maybe you should. Yeah. It's, uh, I think you're winning either way. It says emotions are running high, though. And it's, it's the time of year for that, right? <laughs> time of year where... People are out and about wearing next to nothing and out drinking and flirting and all these things. So, I mean, I mean it looks like all love here. It looks like, I mean, there's definitely something coming out of this. There's going to be some kind of love, love interactions. How long it lasts, all these things, it's hard to say. It could be that you're into something that's making you feel stuck, but it's more stable. But there's always, I mean, sometimes you got to take a risk, and maybe that's what's going to make you happy. All right, well, that's all I have, Aries. Um, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm trying to grow the channel. I want to get enough subscribers to where it's like worth me actually starting to do some of the astrology and stuff on here. Um, feel free to leave a comment. Um, yeah, that's really all I have. And, you know, I wish you all a happy August and a happy full moon.